Boy skinny problem story time. When you're a skinny dude like me, at least at least for me, I get cold very easily. Unfortunately, that's one of the characteristics of my body I dislike. I don't hold it against myself though. My hands get cold easily and my feet get cold easily. Now trust me, I've tried to solve this issue by gaining some weight, but the problem is no matter what I eat, no matter what I eat, I can eat a I can eat an entire cow. I will not gain a pound. I've weighed the same since I think junior year. I graduated in 2012. So from 2011, I've weighed the same. And then believe it or not, a few weeks ago when I was sick, I even lost more weight. How did I know? Because my belt needed a new hole. I would like to work on the Honda today, but I also would like to do something about my garage door. My overhead door. You see that gap? You can see the sunlight coming in. I think we have to fix that. Granted, there are a lot of things I want to fix in this garage to keep it well insulated. If you guys didn't know, my garage is made of brick, and brick does not insulate well. So every little thing I can do to help it is noted and then sometimes executed. Of course it's raining, but I'd rather have it be raining than snowing. Well, you know what? I'd much rather have it snow than rain at this temperature at least. Not all snow melts on you. Rain just is, is just wet. All the time, every time. I also want to put some sacrete down on the floor to make it nice and smooth because there are some cracks in some spots. So I think we can install those things that I bought a few days ago. I'll go get them. Yeah! This cold thing sucks. These things. Remember I bought these things? They're to keep the door closed all the way because I don't have... I don't have one of those twisty things. So I just bought two of these so I can put one on that side, one on that side. Close it, close it. Door will sit a little tighter to the ground. And then another day we'll put on some trim. Do the, do the sacrete so that it sits nice and tight. So that it insulates a little bit better. I think it'd be beneficial if I got my brother out here. Oh yeah. That's way better. That's the bee's knees. That's the cat's meow. Great. Thank you, Cole. Yep, you're welcome. Sweet. That makes me a happy, happy person. Very happy. It's probably difficult to see, but the gap actually did shrink. And once I, you know, do something with the concrete, it should level it right out. And then I'll put a nice little piece of trim in there to really shrink the gap. We'll get rid of it. It's like a piece of foam padding. That way not a lot of cold air can get in here. But it's supposed to be drier and less cold next week. So we'll have to do that then. I suggest if you don't understand valve clearances or you don't wish to learn about valve clearances, skip 30 seconds forward because I'm going to explain the valve clearances on the Honda. So this is your camshaft, and this runs the intake valves on my dirt bike. What we're dealing with is the valve clearance is at zero right now, and that's no good. The clearance is supposed to be six thousandths or 16 millimeters. There's actually an equation for solving this, and it's A equals B minus C plus D. So A is our new shim, A is the one we're going to buy. B is recorded valve clearance. It is zero, like I said. There's no gap. There's supposed to be a gap. There isn't one. Now since my caliper measures in inches, I have to go with the inches, not the millimeters. So the specified value that it's supposed to be is .006. So that just plugs in there, plus what the shim already is after measuring it with a caliper. It measured .065. 0 0.006 plus 0 0.065 equals 0 0.071. Or convert that over with handy dandy Google, and that's what the millimeters equals. And like I've told you guys before, we're gonna do the shims before we do the whole valve job. That's a way smarter investment than just going out and buying all new valves when it doesn't currently need it. It's your time to shine, baby. In this crappy weather, you gotta shine. I'm sure you'll show the weather who's boss. Check it out, I parked in between the lines. Oh yeah. Two weeks ago, everybody was getting highly offended when I w went over the yellow lines. The yellow lines are just suggestions. I wasn't trying to be a dick. I was just parking. This is a big truck. Not a very short wheelbase. It can't make tight turns. 
Not only that, but I think I parked in like the furthest spot you could possibly park. I purchased my new shims. I ended up getting a 1.80 and a 1.85. I have my handy dandy red strap hanging onto the Honda. Matches the Honda quite well. Now I'm going to time the bike, install the new shims, see what things are at. Hopefully they're in spec. The bike will run better that way. Did anybody catch my whoopsie? I told you guys I was never that good in math. I did, however, pass with like an 80 or an 85, but that was only because I did my homework. Didn't do very good on the tests and quizzes. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. So here, the clearance was zero, and then I subtracted .006, and then I added it to .6, which I added it to .071, which is incorrect, because you have a negative sign here. So when you take a negative plus a positive, you actually negate out of the positive, so it would actually be 0 .059. So after figuring out that mistake, and going back up to the part store, I got the right shims. I thought. But the thing is, when you do valves, and you're messing with the clearances and shims and you know everything like that, it's not about what the math says, it's about what the feeler gauge says. Once you get the measurement of the feeler gauge, which are these things, then you can do your math. Because I have both these shims in, this one's good, but this one's bad. So I have to take it all apart again, reshim it, check the clearances. Hopefully they're good. They should be. I kind of like the bike sitting this way anyways. I turned it around if you guys didn't notice. Of course you noticed. The front tire was over here. Now it's over there. I am very pleased to say we are finally in spec. Both intake and exhaust. Nice drag. Very nice drag. Nice drag. Very nice drag. If I could put two thumbs up right now, I would. But I have to hold you guys. When I took this off, the side cover over here where the stator is, I actually broke the gasket, which isn't a huge deal. So even if I get this thing back together today, I won't be able to run it today because I'll just have oil spewing everywhere. Be a waste of money, waste of time, and I'll have to clean up another mess. But for now, I'm gonna retorque everything back, get the top end all taken care of, bust out this carburetor. Four clicks. There we go! Kitty, check it out! There's no doubt I shouldn't replace my spark plug. But the thing is, right now I'm not too worried about it. And as you guys know, we can't start it at all until that gasket comes in and I put that left side cover on. So the spark plug's just gonna go in its place to prevent dirt get from getting into the cylinder. Last night I actually went internet shopping, dot coms and dot nets. Last night when I was shopping, I was actually shopping for Kawasaki parts. Now if you spend $50, you got free shipping. So I ended up getting like $43 worth of stuff and I'm like, man, how can I spend another $7? So I ended up buying two bolts that were ridiculously priced. You go down to the hardware store, they're like 75 cents. So I just bought two of those so that it would rack up after tax and I was clear. But what I should have done, is bought a gasket for this thing. I would have cleared it perfectly because that was like $7 as well. So I hurried up, called him up today, like 12 hours later. So I called him up and I'm like, yo, can I mess with my order? I have something else I want to order. They're like, sure. So I give him the part number. Real nice lady helped me out. She said she would add it to the bill. I'm happy. Now we'll get all our parts at one time. shock out. Next is the carburetor. I'm not going to get to the carburetor tonight though. My buddies and I have been talking. That's what the group messaging has been. And that's why every once in a while you hear the dinging noise. Being a part of a group message can be annoying, funny, or necessary. I still haven't found it to be necessary yet. 
I've just found it the other two. I gotta get ready though. They're gonna be here in half an hour. I gotta take a bath. I gotta I gotta get dressed. I gotta do my makeup. For the ones that don't know what sarcasm is, I don't wear makeup. The only makeup I wear is 10W40, baby. It's very slippery though. Oh.